Good day everyone, this is the, I suppose you could call it, build report for the TonePad power supply. I showed a quick demo um, of the noise, of its noise filtering capabilities. Also said it cost about $15. On thinking about it, actually was probably a bit less than that. Maybe it could actually be another under 10 <laughs> build. I've done two now, which was, um, the first one was uh, build an effect for under $10 and then I actually built an amp. Uh, a little mini amp, um, one watt uh, powered amp for under ten dollars, and now I've built a power supply for under ten dollars. Um, so to build this, you're going to need a power supply, and um, and you can just use any old power supply. Like this is, for instance, a uh, one from a Netgear uh, switch we had at work, an old switch, um, and it's twelve volts, one amp. Just pay attention to the polarity, though, because when you wire up the input. You have to make sure that you wire that around the right way, otherwise you're going to be feeding the negative and positive around the wrong way. So, yeah, pay attention to the um, to the you know the little diagram they have of what the tip is connected to and what the barrel is connected connected to. And obviously, on the output of the thing, you have it the way the the boss way, which is the plus on the on the barrel and the negative on the tip. So I'm a bit time poor these days. I didn't give it a powder coating job or anything fancy. I just gave it a rough sand. Kind of gave it a bit of a brushed um, aluminium look, which actually looks pretty cool if I had it done it properly and not just sort of, you know, half-assed it. Um, and you're obviously going to want to clear coat it too because it scratches really easily. So let's take a look inside. I'm pretty sure this isn't meant to go into a 1590A, but the board just looked like it just just wanted to go in there. So um, uh, yeah, I just made it happen. Um, also, I forgot to mention with the power supply too, actually, um, this TonePad um, power supply board is actually meant to have a 12 volt uh, AC input, um, and it's actually got a rectifier on the board. This is the one, the, the power supply I'm using is DC, so you just leave the rectifier off, and um, that's just the four, the four diode bridge um, at the start of the circuit. Just leave that off and just, just tap in um, pretty much on the point after that and um, you'll be fine. That heat sink um, goes onto the power regulator um, and um, it does get warm. Um, I used a tone pad, uh, sorry, a Tadar heat sink uh, and I just cut it down to size with a, um, uh, with a hacksaw. Uh, pretty, it's just aluminium, it's pretty easy to cut through. With these DC jacks, you don't have to use four of them. I should have checked the, schem the schematic and the layout before I actually built it. Um, you could just use one because they're all in serial anyway, so just get a DC uh, daisy chain that's got enough connectors on it, you know, like 10 or whatever, however many you need, and just use that instead of having these four individual, um, or five, sorry, he's got on the um, layout um, individual sockets. It's just a bit of a pain in the bum trying to drill all these holes and you know, put all these DC jacks in when you can just use one daisy chain. So um, it would also save a bit of space here too because it, it got it definitely got very crowded around where that heat sink is. Um, and the heat sink is connected to the power regulator and you don't want the heat sink touching the, um, touching the, the enclosure because the enclosure is um, connected to ground uh, and you don't want the heat sink touching ground. So you need to separate those uh, separate the heatsink from the ground, and I know people probably say, "Oh, that tape's going to insulate the um, heatsink," but it just got so tight, I just had to use it. Tried to leave some um, some of it off, but yeah, in the, in the in, at the end of the day, I, I still had to put it on because it's better to have a you know slightly warmer heatsink than a um, heatsink that's touching ground. And you've also got to connect the ground to just one point, um, and I've just gone off with a bit of wire and wrapped it around the um, the the nut of the DC jack, the input DC jack, and then tighten the, um, tighten the nuts to, um, to, hold the, uh, to hold the ground wire onto the enclosure. I don't know how anyone else do did it um, or does it. That's just how I've done it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you leave off, if you only have one DC jack on the end here, you don't have to worry about these three. You'd be able to fit it in so much easier. You'd, you'd just have so much room. It'd be ridiculous. But because um, I'd already drilled the holes out before I realised that they were in, ser in, um, in series, so um, yeah, I ended up sort of, well, I just filled them pretty much, just so that I didn't have holes on the front, but yeah, you don't need to do that. You can have four daisy chains coming off that at least, I guess, 
probably one advantage. Um, yeah, and it's adjustable too. There's a trim pot. You can adjust the output. I think I've got mine on about 9.3 volts. Um, and I've also seen it um, plug the um, multimeter into uh, the output of this thing and put it into the punch amp up really loud, which the, the punch amp sucks the current big time. Um, and I didn't notice... I noticed the thing about a 0.1 volt of a volt um, drop, which is pretty good. I mean, that thing, when it's on full blast... Uh, can pretty much turn pedals off um, with my other power supply. So, so um, yeah, it's pretty good that this doesn't do that. So that's pretty much it um, for this sort of build report of the, of the power filter. Um, it's one of those things, I mean, if you've got a 12-volt DC um, uh, power, power pack lying around, you can build one and then, you know, you'll know that it does a, does a fairly decent job of um, filtering out noise um, and instead of doing the power, the power pellet filter on its own but if you're using a 9 volt DC adapter you'll have to do the um, power pellet filter um, because you need you can't put 9 volts into this regulator and have 9 volts come out the other end it'll be like 7 volts or 6 volts it, there's a couple of volts that it needs to um, to to do it to do its thing thanks for watching if you like the video give me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself guitar pedal videos tutorials and demos thanks for watching